if you're really gonna go for it, you gotta make some changes. So I wanna mention these. We've, I've mentioned this before, but I felt the Holy Spirit say we need to cover this again. Have any guys in here work on machinery? I mean, you're a mechanic and work on machinery, or maybe you have tractors and things. Uh, have you ever seen those gigantic screwdrivers as heavy, I think these you know, big long ones. You ever seen those real heavy screwdrivers? You have seen them, right? Now I have a nice watch on. And let's say that I wanted to work on it. Would that big giant heavy screwdriver, could I work on it? Probably tear my watch up, right? If I was gonna work on a watch, how big is that screwdriver? You ever seen those little, they're about that big. It's a little dinky little screwdriver, you know? Or you work on your glasses, they have this little, you go into glass, or they sell glasses, they get the little screwdriver out, you know? If they came out and said, set your glasses down on the floor there. All right. <laughs> That's not gonna work, is it? No. So, so many people are motivated by what they see instead of the effectiveness of what they're doing. I call it going for great and missing significance. And this is really the greatest temptation in our culture is the media broadcasts so many things that are great that we get so distracted. And when you become distracted, you become confused. How many have found that out? You go to your phone, you got, here's your, you're going to look for this one item. And an hour later, you haven't even gone there once. And you find that you've, you're so confused. Now you've got 12 things swirling through your mind and you never did go back to the thing you were going to get done, right? So distractions bring confusion. If you're going to go to warp speed, friend, we got to eliminate the distractions. We have to get lean and mean and we have to focus. In fact, when God said to me about warp drive, uh, warp speed, he said this to me and I said this last night. He said, Gary, you need to go a little faster and I need you to be a little more intentional because he'd been talking to me about my assignment for quite a while, and I'll cover that more tonight, but he was wanting to tweak this. Hey, hey, Gary, Gary, this isn't an option play. This isn't something you do on the side. This is an assignment. My assignment needs to be full front and center. This needs to be your focus. I need to have this done. It takes that kind of focus. So I remember I, I, as a hunter, you know, I was gonna try duck hunting. I was a squirrel hunter back in, you know, back in, as a kid, high school, junior high. But I would see these ducks fly over. I knew, you know, I knew I had the magazines. And I said, well, maybe I'll try. So I thought, well, what do you do? You gotta buy decoys, right? I, that's what the magazine said. So I went down to whatever it was, I think, some store down, I can't remember, but bought uh, maybe 10 decoys. There was a little pond out where we were squirrel hunting. I saw ducks once in a while. So I, one morning, my friend and I went down there and threw the decoys in there and sat a while, nothing happened. And I got bored. And so I wandered down to a little creek there and began to look for squirrels. And as I was down there, I saw this, this flock of ducks circle the pond and come into land. And I was excited. How many are excited when you see potential in front of you? You see an opportunity, right? And so I was excited and this pond was perfect because it was built up by a dam, you know? And so I could sneak up on the pond without the ducks seeing me because I could come over that dirt embankment and I could bushwhack them, right? <laughs> so, so that's what I did. I come up over that pond, had my, my a double barrel 20 gauge and I snuck up over and peeked over and sure enough, the water had about 20 ducks on it, man. I thought this was great. And then I noticed that these ducks, but in the midst of these ducks, there's these big ducks. And I thought, well, I'm like, I know what I, I got two shots, I got a double barrel. I'm gonna shoot one while it's on the water. And then as they take off, I'll drop a second one. I'll have me a good meal. So the big ducks are out there and the small ducks. So I, I take careful aim at the big duck and I shoot and then they all take off and I shoot again, I miss. And then I look back at the one I shot and amazingly it flipped on its side and was sinking. <laughs> All of a sudden, I realized I'd shot my own decoy. <laughs> Isn't that what we do? You get all excited about an opportunity, and you, you're not paying attention to what's happening. And so that was a great shot. It was a great shot, but it wasn't a significant shot. You can't eat plastic. A lot of energy wasted. It's a great shot. Let me tell you about the great shot, how I snuck up. 
<laughs> but it wasn't significant. See, the definition of great is being above something you compare it to, bigger, better than something you compare it to. That was a great shot, but significance means having a major effect. And the word effect means having the ability to produce results. So it was a great shot, looked great, great story, but it did not produce the results that I needed. It wasn't significant. And so what the enemy wants to do is get you all enamored with all the great things, everything that looks good and everything be good and make you feel good and trying to get you to be great. For what reason? Really, what you need to be focused on is significance. Getting done what needs to get done and getting the assignment done and being focused and not distracted, right? Come on now, is that right? We've got work to do. So write this down, don't take the decoy. The enemy is trying to decoy your energy and your life out of your assignment. Don't take the decoy. So Jesus was a perfect example of what it means to be focused. And so he is a perfect picture of living a life of significance. And so Luke chapter four, verse 40 says this, at sunset, the people brought to Jesus all who had various kinds of sicknesses and laying his hands on each one, he healed them. Moreover, demons came out of many people shouting, you are the son of God, but he rebuked them and not allowed them to speak because they knew he was the Messiah. At daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place and the people were looking for him. When they came to where he was, they tried to convince him to stay there, not to leave. But he said, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns because that is why I was sent. Yes. That was a great meeting. That was a great shot. Do you want me to tell you? I can tell you again about it. I mean, what do you know? It was great. It was awesome. The big flock came in. Decoys worked. I snuck up. Perfect setup. Made the great shot. The decoy sank. I mean, I can tell you all about it, right? Jesus was having a pretty good meeting. Demons were squealing. Cripples were getting up and walking home. And so, of course, they did not want him to leave, right? But what gave Jesus his significance? Who he was and why he was sent. Who are you and where are you sent? Who are you? You are not here by accident. God has put you here in this time, in this place. Why are you here and where are you sent? is an answer that you have to give. So here are nine significant indicators that'll help you define dis distractions and make quality decisions when you leave here. Number one, it said Jesus laid his hands on each one. Now that was not his assignment. It was part of his assignment, but how would he increase his significance by training others how to lay their hands on the sick, right? Now, he's very limited. If he had to lay his hands on every single person, his significance, remember what significance is? The ability to produce results is very limited, correct? So he understood the necessity to train others to duplicate what he was doing. So he sent out the 12, then the 72, then he sent the church. And now you're laying your hands on the sick and they recover. Let me ask you this. What are you laying your hands to? What are you laying your hands to? Is what you're putting your hands to increasing your significance? Is it tied to your assignment? Or are you laying your hands to, as most people do, to just wasting time? Purpose demands urgency. What are you laying your hands to? As I've said many times, I told this at church not too long ago, uh, we were cleaning our basement out and found boxes that we had packed 28 years ago. We've made three or four moves since then. We have never opened those boxes. How significant were, were they to our assignment? They weren't. It's okay to hold on to a few things, mementos. How many have been into a home, and I don't mean to bring this into personal, you know, your space. How many have been in a house and they got trinkets all over all the shelves? Doesn't it feel claustrophobic? He's like, ugh. Just how many go on vacation and you walk into that condo and it's spotless and you go, ugh. Oh. Hmm? It's like opening a, a blank piece, a piece of paper. It invites you to write on it, right? And so here's what I say. If you 
Your vision must be pretty small if you can't declutter. Your vision is very small if you can't declutter. If you got everything you own owns you, you know that, right? You got to change its oil, wax it, polish it. How much stuff do you want to carry on your assignment before it starts weighing you down and distracting your time from what is the essential of your call, of your mission, right? How many times? So here's a question. Does this serve my purpose? Just go through your house, hold it up, and you're going to say, but that's such a great, you ever done that? But it's such a great, it's still good. It's still perfect, you know, there's wisdom in, in, uh, there's wisdom in storing some things. So of course we're not saying that, but you have to be intentional with that because before long you are weighed down with a house full of stuff that has nothing to do. In fact, most of it you haven't touched in years, but it is just weighing your vision down. It's taking your energy. Every time you walk in there, it just saps the life out of your vision because you already feel overwhelmed before you start. Does this serve my purpose? Does it serve my purpose? Do I need it? Get rid of it. Okay, that's number one. What do you put your hands to? Number two, who are you? Jesus knew who he was. So what is your uniqueness? Our culture celebrates uniformity. Everyone doesn't want to stand out, so everyone tries to be the same. The culture tries to confine your creativity, tries to steal your identity. And by wanting to be popular or wanting to be accepted by the masses, people give themselves away and they become someone they're not. And they can't find themselves after a while. So what's your uniqueness? God gave that to you. You know, what's your, what's your uniqueness?